What is going on, fellas? In today's book review, we got Dark Psychology by James Williams. All about the practical uses and best defenses of psychological warfare in everyday life. How to detect and defend against manipulation, deception, dark persuasion, and convert NLP. So we got, when you light a candle, you also cast a shadow. We need to contact with other human beings to thrive. Ignorance is bliss. The price you pay for ignorance is far greater than the burden of that knowledge brings. By acknowledging and embracing your vulnerabilities, you can transform your greatest weaknesses into your greatest strengths. Manipulation is fueled with good intent and can be a blessing. But when used wickedly, it is the begging of the magician's karmic calamity. One of the most common tactics employed by manipulator, or manipulators is lying. A master manipulation is skilled at the art of deception. Another tactic employed by manipulators is guilt tripping and shaming. When confront, confronted for something they have done wrong, they instantly deny it and then promptly turn the tables around by making you feel bad for questioning them in the first place. Some manipulators employ sex and seduction to carry out their devious objectives. When caught with their hands in the proverbial cookie jar, anger and projection of blame are quickly used to manipulate the situation in their favor. A liar knew that he is a liar, but one who speaks mere portions of truth in order to deceive is a craftsman of destruction. Hypnosis, hypnotism puts you under the complete control of your hypnotist. Certain people do things simply because they can not because they were propelled by some childhood hurt, a need to perform vengeance for an offense you may or may not have committed. They do it simply because they can. Some men just wanna simply watch the world burn. As humans, it is in our nature to try and understand why. We want to make sense of our situation and rather believe that we are just victims of random acts. Examine a person's family and friends. Number one, you know some. You know the saying, show me your friends and I'll, I'll tell you who you are or show you your future. If a person has no friends, it's a huge red flag. There's a reason they have no friends. Because if you're not a good person, people probably aren't going to like you and want to stay away from you. You know, the rich get richer, the poor get poor. Two, history. History repeats itself. So, um, what do you call it? If something bad happens, around, if you're around someone and something bad happens... It's probably going to keep repeating, you know, bad things are going to keep happening to bad people. Good things are going to keep happening to good people. Antisocial values. People who are disliked by all are huge red flags. Because um, there's a reason, again, if someone, if there's a, if everyone doesn't want to be around you, there's probably a reason why. And that's just like some people that you do like, everyone wants to be around them because there's a reason why. Substance abuse. Dependency on any form of drug or alcohol is a clear indicator that this person is struggling with certain issues. Reverse psychology, sometimes I push you away because I secretly hope that you will pull me closer. Most relationship experts would tell you that we are conditioned to want what we can't have. So to make the person like you more or want you more, you make yourself unavailable to this person. Those that go searching for love only manifest their own lovelessness and the loveless never find love. Only the loving find love, and they never have to seek for it. It comes to you. A guy sees his girl as sexually alluring and irresistible. She wants him to vacuum. So she says, vacuum the living room or else there will be no sex tonight. If she does this consistently, he subconsciously gets the message that he that doing chores could reward him with having good sex later. Over time, he becomes programmed to do the chores and he would have naturally declined to do because of the sexual motivation his partner offers. This scenario seems harmless as both parties benefit. Regardless of what faith you believe in, there is a fact that our faith sometimes creates blind spots that distorts reality, causing us to make decisions that we probably wouldn't if we were in our right and proper state of mind. Some people prey on, our, on the fear of the afterlife, so they use it to manipulate us into getting what they want. A lot of religious leaders abuse the rules and influence us by deceiving their members into making decisions that only serve their selfish agendas. Again, in our attachment to people who have died, as well as our concerns for what happens after death, clouds our judgment and leaves us open to crooks who would like to manipulate the situation to their advantage. The employee, the same trick of the false religious leaders using deception and lies to manipulate their victim. 
Both poor and rich people fall over Ponzi schemes. The two things that two classes have in common is a desire to make money and make it fast. The trust of a friend showing you how much money they made with an investment versus a stranger trust word of mouth from friends and family. That's why Ponzi schemes work so well. A woman's in love mesmerizes her lover's scent. Every time she gets a whiff of that scent, her mood is transformed. People disguise themselves and make themselves into something they are not. They wear clothes and perfume that make it seem as though they are wealthy and because you have such a strong emotional connection with wealth, you look past the warning signs and make a regretful decision. Acknowledging the lies we tell ourselves. Self-deception comes in many forms, but the most popular form of self-deception is denial. Sometimes it is masked in optimism in the face of a dire situation. Women in abusive relationships know a man raising his hand against you is displaying the highest form of disrespect. But I have heard these violent men been described as affectionate and their occasional violence being just one of their ways of showing the woman that they care. This doesn't just apply to relationships. People have found themselves working at a place they know exploits them, but they tell themselves how jobs are difficult to find and how they continue to work under these conditions, refusing to ever protest because they have to come to realization of the situation and their denials. Lies and secrets, they are like cancer to the soul. They eat away what is good and leave only destruction behind. If you share a certain view on politics, you are more likely to be the following or reading articles slash posts that support your belief. You are more inclined to fall on that lie because you want to confirm it with your own personal beliefs or theories. Uh, when a manipulator meets a person who appears to be emotionally stable, he or she knows that it would be difficult to work their devious charms on such a person. One's first line of action is to wear down the emotional foundation of that person. A manipulator looks for chink or chinks in the person's proverbial armor and begins to exploit it. Let's say you are normally confident or you're a normally confident person, but you have some insecurities about your body. A master manipulator would key into that concern and twist it by amplifying your fears. Dwelling on the past, negative or positive, is taking you away from being engaged 100% in the moment. Dwelling on the past makes you depressed no matter how much you revisit it or dwell on the past. You cannot change it. What you own and have total control over is what you do now. Detach yourself from the past and from the fears of the future. You put yourself on the right now. There is a different type of optimism that appears to disconnect you from the reality and the type of optimism is known as blind optimism. Some people take it too far and put absolute faith in the possibility that the good outcome they're hoping for would outweigh the likelihood of things going wrong. You are not just thinking that you have a good chance of getting the desired positive outcome. You have deluded yourself into thinking things would play out the way you hoped they would. Because they are banking on the positives of the situation, they do not take any steps to protect themselves in the event that things go worry. Because they are not even entertaining any negative notion. The truth hurts, but it will set you free. Once you believe things are permanent, you are tapped into a world without doors. The emotions are some of the things that make our soul existence as human that more valuable. And getting rid of these emotions would be asking to living in a world without color. Accept that you have a problem. Forgive yourself. There are pills that help you cope with anxiety and depression, but there are no pills to get to that place where you completely fall in love with yourself. I really like that one. Trust your intuition to begin trusting it. You have to accept it and may not always make logical sense. Trust your instincts. You have to be open to the idea of trusting yourself and trusting others. I'm very big on that intuition. Your inability to trust others would just make you paranoid. And when you are paranoid, it is not your instincts that kick in. It is your fear. You have to let go of fear, embrace trust, and let that lead in your new relationships. Without the roadblocks put up by fear in your mind, you're better able to hear the voice within. Don't go into a relationship thinking you are getting played, whether it is a business relationship, a romantic relationship, or even a regular acquaintance. Be open when you approach them. Employ the best practices in all of your dealings. You reap what you sow. Life has a funny way of working itself out smoothly in the end. The best thing you can do is understand your own thoughts and feelings and do your best to live out your principles and values. So that is Dark Psychology. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Other than that, it's your boy. Have a good day and peace out.